The goal of this video is to analyze origin crossings of polar curves. So if you look at the formula for a polar curve, you can figure out at what angle theta the graph should cross through the origin, but you get a little more than that. You, you also know the tangent slope at which it should cross the origin. So this should inform your sketches when you try to graph polar curves. So to warm up, let's uh, review some terminology. Suppose we have a line through the origin, and we'll measure the angle from the positive x-axis to the line. And we'll call that theta, um, that angle theta, the angle of inclination of the line. And let's measure off uh, a rise and a run here, A and B. And we'll notice that the slope is, of course, the rise over the run, so that's B over A. But right triangle trigonometry tells us that tangent of theta should be the opposite over the adjacent, which is also b over a. So in fact, what we've discovered is that the slope of that line is in fact the tangent of the angle of inclination. So you can move back and forth between the slope and the angle theta through the tangent function. So now let's look at a motivating example of what we're going to talk about in this video. We'll take the polar curve r equals 3 cosine 3 theta, which you can plot on a device. What you have on the right-hand side is the actual polar plot. The left-hand side is a Cartesian graph of r versus theta. So you can just plot r in the vertical axis, theta in the horizontal axis, like good old-fashioned Cartesian graphs, and analyze that function to inform how you're going to draw the guy on the right. So your analysis, your basic analysis, includes sort of figuring out the amplitude. The amplitude of this thing is 3, and the period is 2 pi over 3. So that tells you where the peak is, tells you where the trough should be. Also, you can figure out where the zeros are exactly for this curve. And now what we're going to notice is that every time there's a zero, in the graph on the left, you get an origin crossing. And moreover, the um, angle of inclination as you pass through the origin appears to be equal to the argument on the left side that gave you the zero in the first place. So we're going to prove this conjecture in the slides that remain. So let's picture the conjecture concretely, more generally. Um, the Cartesian plot on the left um, allows us to see there's a zero at theta star. And what we want to do is verify that, in fact, when we plot the polar curve, um, there will be an origin crossing with angle of inclination theta star. And then one way to verify that is to see that the tangent slope is the tangent function evaluated at theta star. So how would we go about proving this conjecture? We could employ the formula, the polar formula, for dy dx to, to analyze the tangent slope. So if theta is equal to theta star, we would plug in theta star into the values for our in our formula for dy dx. But of course, if theta is theta star, then r is zero. That's the whole point. Theta star is a zero of the function. So those two terms cancel, and we're left with this much of the formula. And then, what's important to note is the dr d thetas cancel. And what are we left with? We are left with tangent of theta star. So in fact, it is true that when you have a zero at theta star for your polar function, you get a, an origin crossing and the uh, angle of inclination of that origin crossing is in fact theta star. 